Hi, it's Gordon here at Avalite, and I'm going to show you how to build some more complicated keyframes than in the earlier video. In this particular show file, I've got a matrix of 150 beams across the back wall. But rather than just sending them two lots of instructions or four lots of instructions, I'm going to go through the same process, but just make it a little bit more complex. First thing that I've done beforehand is make sure that my group layout inside that particular group is nice and organized. I'm then going to go into shapes and effects, keyframe shapes, and create. The keyframes already located my fixtures for me, so I know they're going to start from a nice happy position. First thing I'm going to do is put some colors in there that I want. Cyan, a bit dark blue, maybe a bit of magenta in there as well. Now I've made a three frame keyframe and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say finish recording frames. Maybe I want this one to be a little bit shorter and this one to be a little bit longer this time. As soon as I start putting in a spread and a direction, I can move this window away to check they're doing exactly what I want. That looks good. I'm happy with that. This time, rather than adding another layer, I'm going to add another keyframe. So I'm going to say add keyframe. Now I'm able to add an additional keyframe alongside this one. So I'm going to make a conventional flyout as well. Dimmer at zero, add frame. Dimmer at 100, add frame. And then finish recording frames. Now you can see in addition to just this one layer that I have in that first keyframe, I have another keyframe here that I could choose a different spread and a different direction for. I'm gonna add another layer inside my second keyframe where all, the, all of these lights point down and point up. Those of you who've made it before know that I always flip that one to snap and then have a look. Now I can see these colors kind of waving as the rest of it goes. Make that full screen again. Maybe I want this keyframe to have a spread of four and to go from the top left hand side across while that original color keyframe I have goes from the bottom middle out with a spread of six. Having a look at that, it looks like the colors are different all the time and it looks like that keyframe fly in is working nicely. So I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna choose my record mode carefully and I'm gonna choose playback. Now, as soon as I've done this, I've decided that the group layout's not quite as I wanted it. I'm gonna go inside this playback. You can do this on a console via hitting open slash view and selecting it or clicking on that gray space. Now I can see that I have two keyframes running in there. If I click on this one, I can have a look at that group layout and make any adjustments that I need. If I'm fine with that, but maybe I want that color effect to just go through once, I can grab that color effect in the cycles column and rather than where it says infinity, I can just say one. Close those windows and now fire that effect again. You can see that that keyframe, the color keyframe, has faded out after it's completed one full cycle across that rig. It's back to the previous colors that I gave those fixtures and that fly effect is still working. Now, if I want to edit a keyframe, I've got to drag the whole thing back into the programmer, which you can do via hitting include and then selecting the playback that you've got a keyframe on. Your effects editor window can be accessed via soft key F or the workspace that I made earlier. I've decided this layer looks great, but I want it to work the other way around. I could grab that, scroll down to the bottom and flick the reverse switch. Maybe this I've decided I don't like anymore, so I'm gonna select it on the left and put it in a bin underneath. 
going to add another layer that makes those lights go at full intensity this time and off this time. This looks good. Maybe I want that over there. Maybe I want this to snap. And you can see just by building up these simple instructions, I've got a lot of control afterwards. As soon as I take that direction differently, maybe change the spread as well and close. Open up my capture visualizer and see how that effect looks. Now from those same instructions I had before, I have managed to make a different looking keyframe that I quite like. So I'm going to say record there. Here I've built a complicated keyframe. I've changed it without even firing it. I've then grabbed all that information and put it into a new playback in a different way. Using this, I could then go into my existing cue lists, select a few of my cues, and load this keyframe that I have just made nice and easily, nice and quickly. That's the next step into building some more complicated and some more elaborate keyframes. Thanks for watching and tune into the next one.